Hey everyone. Hi Francisca. Hi Amanda. Hi Alexis. Eric, Faith, nice to see you all here. Hi everyone. Hi Hannah, Ella. Hi Mercy, Katie, Kayla, Katia. Hi everyone. Tiffany, Shreya, Nina, hi all. Hi Sanaya, hi Sahum, Rice. Ria. Veda, I hope I'm saying that right. Sydney, Stephen, Sophia. It's so good to see you all. We have two Elis. Ooh. Well, Valerie, Valentina, Tiffany, Tata. Hi, everybody. A few Isabellas. Hi. Gabriella, Eric, Emmanuel. No, we have such a good crowd here. Jacob, Jada, Jaina, Isabella, Fua, welcome. Good evening and good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Multicultural Open Houses Residential College Panel. Please note that you can use the Q&A panel at the bottom of your screen to communicate technical issues at any time, and one of my colleagues will assist. Please also use the Q&A feature during the presentation to ask a question that will get raised at the end of the session. You'll hear the appropriate time. If we don't get to your question, no worries. We can always follow up. Uh, you can always go to the uh, admissions.el.edu backslash mo. Just a reminder, this session is being recorded and will be shared after the session on the Mo website. At this time, I'd love to introduce Jill Carrera, Assistant Director at Yale Undergraduate Admissions. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much, Mara. And hey, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for the Residential College Life panel. Like Mara said, my name is Jill Carrera. I use she, her, hers pronouns, and I'm going to be the moderator for tonight's panel. A little bit about me. Uh, I'm one of the assistant directors in the Yale admissions office, and I'm also a Yale class of 2017 alum. So I'm actually really happy to, to be here, get to ask questions of our current, current students, and also just learn a little bit more about their experience, because I know mine was fantastic, but I really like to hear from other people as well. Before I hand it off to them for some introductions, I do want to cover what the next hour is going to look like. First, we're going to be doing some of those intros, like I mentioned. Those introductions are also going to include some information about each student's residential college experience. And then I'll start by asking some of the most frequently asked questions that we get about the residential college experience at Yale. And then once I get through those questions, we're going to move on to that live Q&A that Maura mentioned. Now, the Q&A feature is actually located at the bottom of the Zoom screen if you haven't used it before, but I do want to ask, like Maura said, that you kind of wait until we get through those intros and those first guiding questions, and I'll make sure that I let you know when to start using that Q&A, just because, you know, we might actually answer some of your questions when we're going through those little presentations. Um, now, also, make sure that the questions you put in the Q&A are related to residential college life, since that's what tonight's panel is all about. We're going to try to avoid answering admissions questions or, like, any questions about what our students' GPAs or SAT scores were, because that's just not what tonight's about, y'all. We really hope, though, that you do leave tonight's session with a really great idea of what campus life is like for our students. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and stop talking, and I'm going to hand it over to our students for some intros and residential college info. Zipporah, do you want to go ahead and start us off? Of course. Thank you so much, Jill. Um, we have a presentation for you guys tonight. We are so glad that you're here joining us with Mo. Um, so we're going to start off with what is a residential college. So all incoming undergraduates are assigned to one of Yale's 14 residential colleges. If you know anything about Harry Potter, I call it the sorting hat of Yale. <laughs> um, the residential college system is the most distinctive feature of the college, and it offers students a familiar familiar, comfortable living environment, personal interaction with faculty members and administrators, and exciting opportunities for academic and extracurricular exploration. The residential colleges do a lot to foster spirit, allegiance, and a sense of community at Yale. So, next slide. Um, all uh, residential colleges have dining halls, courtyards, 
desks, libraries, computer clusters, butteries, which is kind of like a student run um, food service where you can get like quesadillas and um, late night snacking. Um, we have a fitness center and music practice rooms. Students have access to all of the facilities in their college throughout their time at Yale, even if they live on old campus. So 10 out of the 14 residential colleges um, house their first years on old campus. And we can talk a little bit about that if you're interested. Um, but the other four residential colleges first years live there um, in their first year and throughout. Um, so yes, if you live uh, on old campus or off campus, you still have access to the facilities in your residential college. So we are going to start. You are going to hear from some wonderful students who have so much college pride, and I am so excited to start. My name is Zipporah. I use she, her pronouns. I am originally from Chicago, woo, woo, if we have any Midwesterners in the building. Um, my high school is Brooks College Prep. Uh, I'm majoring in English and Women's Gender and Sexuality Studies, and my residential college is Ezra Stiles, which is the best residential college, and you will find out why. Next slide. So talking a little bit about Ezra Styles, although all of the colleges have those amenities, we have amenities that are special to our college. We have a common room where you can kind of go with your friends and either do work or do what me and my friends do and just like laugh and play games and blow bubbles. Um, we have a theater, an art gallery, and a dance studio. Ezra Styles traditions include Ezra Styles Gala, where people dress up and just like dance the night away. Um, Arts Week, where students kind of showcase their art. We have a contra dance, a medieval night, and more. Um, we at Styles like pride ourselves on our tight knit community. I highlighted knit because we actually have a knitting club. <laughs> um, but yes, we have Head Camacho, who is actually the like head of the ethnicity, race, and migration department. She's lovely. I call her my second mom. Um, we have Dean Temple. Your dean is kind of the person who you um, like go to for academics. And yeah, Dean Temple has two dogs, which are lovely and they're so beautiful. Um, you have Froco's. So a Froco is a first year counselor. Um, and that's like a senior yearly who's there to help first years throughout their college experience. Um, resident fellows, there are a few on this call, peer liaisons, and like big little fibs. Next slide. And so again, like as a styles, um, our mascot is the moose. Uh, we are the herd. Our colors are black and yellow. Our sister college is Morse, so you can actually get to Morse um like the side of morse like through the college we have like this really cool kind of mysterious like basement hallway that you walk through call it harry potter right um fun fact there are no right angles in our dorms so i put um a picture of our dorm and i promise you like no 90 degree angles is not as wacky as it seems our dorms are really cool um lots of celebrity sightings at styles including handsome dan in our courtyard and mindy kaling from the office. She's actually that picture right there um, with our editor in chief, our former editor in chief of the Yale Daily News, Sammy Westfall, who was also in Ezra Styles. Um, and we also have the best dining hall pizza. Um, like that's objective. And we are the best residential college. Um, so I'm gonna like let you hear from other people, but yes, please ask all of those questions about Ezra Styles and our residential college system at Yale. I'll pass it over. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction, Zipporah. My name is Michael. I use he, him pronouns. I am originally from Alameda, California. Shout out West Coast, West Coast, Best Coast. Um, I went to Intonel High School, go Jets. I am currently studying political science and ethnicity, race and migration, and I am in Brantford. And I am so, so excited to be talking to you all today about my favorite place on this whole planet. Um, next slide, please. So as you can see, Branford is home to the gorgeous Harkness Tower. Um, our mascot is the squirrel. And Robert Frost once said that the Branford Courtyard is the most beautiful college courtyard in America. And I could say that that is completely 100% true. Branford is gorgeous in all aspects. Um, in addition to the giant courtyard, we also have three smaller courtyards. Um, and some special Branford traditions uh, include the Branford uh, College Formal in our dining hall. There's also another semi-formal called Crushers and Chaperones that the Branford College Council organizes, which is essentially like a middle school themed dance. Everyone shows up dressed up like, 
you know, from whatever they were wearing in middle school and we played throwback music and it's such a good time. Um, and then something unique about Brantford um, are the monthly science dinners. So two of Brantford's resident fellows, Professor Rothman and Professor Hirsch, um, you know, are leaders in their fields. Um, for Professor Rothman specializes in cell biology, while Professor Hirsch is a leading scholar in cognitive neuroscience. And every month they host science dinners where students can just sign up um, and eat with them and just talk about science and everything else, whether that's regarding research or college um, or just, you know, anything that's on their minds. And it's also amazing that Professor Rothman um, as a resident fellow, also received the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 2013. And so his Nobel Prize is just hanging in Branford's common room. And I just remember in my first year, every meal that I got from the Branford Dining Hall, I would always pass by a Nobel Prize. And that was just a super amazing experience. Um, and I'm sure not one that many people have. Um, so definitely amazing, Branford, objectively the best res college. Um, and I'll talk a bit more about um, Brantford amenities and, you know, special uh, other events in the next slide. Um, another gorgeous picture of our courtyard. Um, so Brantford College Council is the student government body within our residential college. And there's a college council in every one of the 14 residential colleges. Um, and what they do is a space, uh, is to offer a space uh, for, for students within the residential college to socialize. And they also plan uh, residential college-wide events uh, like crushes and chaperones and the formal, like I mentioned earlier. Something unique about Brantford is the tea room, which is uh, happens once a week and is a technology free space where students come um, and there's usually tea and snacks um, and we just talk and get to know each other um, without any technology and that's a super dope space as well. In addition, um, we also have a common room, like I said earlier. Um, and then we have a studio, um, an art studio and a pottery studio uh, in the basement, including um, game rooms. And there's also a printing, a printing press um, and a lot of other amenities as well. Um, so definitely, you know, a lot of common amenities among the rest colleges, but each residential college also has its unique facilities as well. Um, and then on the next slide, um, I have a bunch of pictures from my first year. So, um, you know, a, a 5K that I did with a couple of other brand 40 ins um, on the top right, that was our first year dinner in the gorgeous Branford dining hall. Um, you know, a picture of Harkness again in the bottom uh, middle, that was my Asian American cultural uh, center peer liaison group in Branford from last year. Um, and, you know, on the bottom uh, left, that was my Froco group. Um, and so, you know, amazing community, just like Zipporah said, um, also a tight-knit community in Brantford and overall a great experience. And I will pass it on to the next person. Hi, everybody. My name's Marco. I'm a junior in Berkeley College. My pronouns are he, him, his. Um, I'm from Franklin Park, Illinois, which is right outside of Chicago. My high school was West Leiden High School. Um, currently, I'm majoring in economics and ethnicity, race, and migration. And like I said, my residential college is Berkeley, and I cannot imagine being in any other college. I would have to say it is just the college with the best energy 24-7. Um, and so Berkeley College, it's actually really interesting because it's split into two different buildings, but they're connected by an underground tunnel. And this tunnel goes underneath what's called the Cross Campus. And Cross Campus is sort of this gathering place for all of Yale College to use. And on one end is Sterling Memorial Library. So Berkeley is really centrally located. We have access to all of these amazing spots on campus right outside of our door. And a little bit about the student life. Our mascot is a Thundercocks. And so when we compete in IMs or intramural sports with all the other teams, um, we have a lot of images of roosters and we're really proud of our mascot and we have amazing chants. And we also have what's called the Berkeley College Orchestra along with a few other smaller organizations within Berkeley that are really important to the community of Berkeley. Um, and so on the next slide, I'll talk a little bit about where these things are happening. Um, so I would say that our best tradition at Berkeley is Thunder Brunch. And I'll, I'll take a little bit to talk about this just because it combines two of my favorite things in Berkeley, which is Thunder Brunch, but also our dining hall. So Thunder Brunch happens once a year and it's this amazing event where the whole dining hall is filled with these different stations for food, 
We have personalized omelets, um, lobster, eggs benedict, and just amazing food and bagel stations and bagels and locks. And it's all happening inside of our dining hall. And the reason I mention our dining hall is because I really do believe it is the most beautiful dining hall on campus. And if you go there at any time for any meal, you are guaranteed to find somebody that you know, not only in Berkeley, but in any of the other residential colleges because Berkeley is so centrally located. And then outside of the dining hall, we do have our separate amenities that are specific to Berkeley, including our basketball court, but not only basketball happens here, there are practices for the orchestra and also practices for various acapella groups. And so there's a lot of music going on and at any day you might walk down there and just hear a live performance. And then we also have our wood shop and then a place called The Roost, which is a wellness center. Um, and it's really nice to go in there and meditate, put your phone away for a few minutes and just unwind. You can go there and there alone or with your friends and it's just a really calming space. And just really briefly, I wanna mention that it's really fun to stay connected with your college, even right now when things are changing at a very fast pace. I am living in New Haven, but not on campus. And Berkeley has really found ways to invite us either out into the courtyards for movie nights at a safe distance and outdoors or with virtual game nights. And so these are just really fun ways and I'm sure they exist in the other colleges, but I wanted to highlight Berkeley's just to show everyone that even right now we are staying connected. And so I'll pass it over to Phyllis and she'll talk about her college. Hello everyone, welcome to Yale, um, virtually. My name is Phyllis. I am a senior studying mechanical engineering with a joint master's in public health. I am from Harare, Zimbabwe, so shout out to all the international students on the call. And I am in Silliman Residential College. Yes, I wore this jacket on purpose. Next slide, please. So I promise touring Silliman will be fun virtually as well. As you can see, we have the biggest courtyard and having this big courtyard means a lot of fun events happen in the middle of it. So for example, on the bottom left, you can see what we call Silly Fest. So imagine waking up um, in your dorm room to loud music, um, seeing bouncy houses outside and a dunk tank. So that's literally what Silly Fest is. And actually in the video that played, um, that is my attempt trying to dunk my dean um, in the dunk tank during Silly Fest. So yes, deans who are in every residential college and are in charge of the academics of the students. So they're always making sure that you are on top of all your academic requirements. They'll also send you weekly emails with internship opportunities, anything academics related, you'll go to your dean for that. But as you saw in this video, they certainly do not miss out on any of the fun. I also wanted to highlight um, a couple of the unique facilities that Silliman has, as um, we've previously heard from the other colleges as well. Um, we have at the top in the middle, the Good Life Center. That is a picture of the sandbox within our Good Life Center. The Good Life Center is another wellness space on campus. So we've heard that Berkeley has one, Silliman College has one too. To the right, we have Silly Flicks, which is a movie theater. So usually we have fun study breaks in Silly Flicks when the Super Bowl is happening. Um, we usually screen it on the big screen. If you would like to go down with your friends to watch something on the big screen, you can just simply sign up for it and use it. Um, below Silly Flicks, you can see the Acorn, which is a coffee shop that we have in Silliman College. It is completely student run. And below that is our sound recording studio. So if you come to college and decide now is the time to release your mixtape, you are free to do that by using the recording studio in Silliman. It's important to note that even though you are not in a particular residential college with the facility that you would like to use, you have access to use the facilities in other residential colleges as well. So you can always sign up. If I wanted to use Morse's theater, for example, I could send an email to Morse and ask to use their theater. Next slide, please. So for the next slide, I thought I would also show you my cinnamon flannel that I decided to sport for slide two. Um, and in this slide, I wanted to highlight dining options. Um, so all the colleges have a dining hall, as you've heard. And I have some pictures of food that I've taken, some of my favorite 
meals in the dining hall. But definitely the most important part of the dining halls is the dining team that works in there. Um, so at the top middle, um, there's a picture of Esther and myself. Um, really, really great friends. And behind us, you can see um, a gratitude corner that we made in the dining hall. Uh, we just write notes to everyone in the college. So another great way to form community. Um, we have a lot of these themed dinners in our dining hall. So in the video, you can actually see one we had for Valentine's Day. We had chocolate dipped marshmallows, chocolate strawberries. And so we just our dining halls become very beautiful, fun and dynamic in that way. Um, every dining hall has the classic Yale waffle maker. So you'll find that in there. Um, so we've had a lot of questions this week asking about Yale dining. And I just wanted to highlight the options there and also to um, let you know that um, no, no matter if you have any food allergies or any sort of dietary restrictions, you just simply have to let the dining hall know and they'll do it for you. The top left, you can see Chef Chris with the pot of gravy. I cannot eat rice without gravy. And so every night, Chef Chris makes me my own separate pot of gravy. So that's how awesome our dining halls are. Next slide, please. Thank you. So we've briefly talked about a lot of the fun study breaks and events that happen in our colleges. And largely, this is due to a very important member of the residential colleges, and they are the head of colleges. So the head of colleges are faculty members who live with you in your residential college, and they are in charge of the social life of the college. Um, so they are really responsible for building the community. So some fun things that head of colleges are responsible for are college teas. So college tea is basically when um, your head of college invites someone influential um, in the community. So for example, they can be a celebrity. Um, pictured in the top left is Alison Williams. Yes, the lead actress of Get Out. And if you watch Girls, she acts in Girls as well. And she is sitting next to Professor Laurie Santos, who is the head of college in Silliman. And so that was a college tea we had. Um, just below that with the ice cream is the CEO and founder of the Museum of Ice Cream came to give a college tea. And he turned the head of college house, which is attached to the dormitory, into the Museum of Ice Cream, basically. So we got to try all these great ice creams and all these wonderful flavors. Another great way um, the head of college can build community is over Thanksgiving. So as an international student, I can't go home um, for Thanksgiving and all the colleges will host some sort of big Thanksgiving feast. So pictured above is my sweet mate and I carving Thanksgiving turkey and there's the table laid out in the head of college house. Silliman is very big on Halloween. Um, in the right corner is um, myself with my head of college, we were at a Halloween party. Sullivan also has the annual haunted house. Um, so I'm pictured at the bottom there, dressed up and stationed at the haunted house. Um, next to that picture is one of the study breaks we have, which is candlelit yoga. Um, we also go on weekly trips in our residential colleges. So one of the videos um, shows me going disco ice skating. Um, there's no ice in Southern Africa. I don't know how to ice skate, but one of the freshman counselors was pushing me on a chair. And so hopefully you've been able to see some of the great ways we build community um, within the residential colleges. And I thought to end, because Silliman is the Supreme College, I would wear my third piece of Silliman merchandise, which is this Silliman Supreme sweater. Another exciting part about the colleges is really great merchandise. And I'm happy to answer any of the questions you have about Silliman in the Q&A. All right, everyone. Hi, my name is Morgan. I'm from Palm Harbor, Florida. Um, shout out Florida, shout out South, Southern US. Um, I'm a major in political science and modern Middle East studies, and we've clearly saved the best for last. Um, because I'm going to be talking about Benjamin Franklin College, which is one of Yale's two new residential colleges, and I am luckily a part of the first full graduating class of Benjamin Franklin College. So I'm super excited to show you around a little bit. Um, that picture in the bottom is when I first got here, so that's kind of cute. That was four, three years ago. Oh my god. Okay, let's talk about Franklin. So like I said, it was built in 2017. Our mascot is the, is the Phoenix, but also we've kind of taken Benjamin Franklin, who sits in our core, to be our other mascot because he sits and greets you as you walk into our wonderful and beautiful courtyard. Um, a couple of the traditions that we have in Franklin, like I said, I'm a part of the first full class to be entering the college. So we've kind of taken the lead of building up all of the traditions that we want to mark this college as, we may, as we've gone through our time here, but also to leave for generations to come. Um, so one of these is the Founders Ball, which usually happens in the fall, and it's 
a super lovely and beautiful um, dance that everybody kind of gets to go, gets dressed up to go to and it's super fun. We also have our very own cafe called The Benjamin, um, where we serve coffee and a couple of other breakfasty cafe type items. Um, one of my favorite traditions that we do is brunch tailgate. If we could go back to that last slide. I'm um, sorry. Um, and our head of college really loves to support our sports teams. So usually whenever it's the first football game of the season or even the first hockey game, um, our head of college will have a huge brunch in the courtyard um, where tables will be set up. And also another thing that I really love is being able to go on sponsored 5Ks, as you can see in the bottom left corner. Okay, next slide. Um, and yes, Franklin has a bunch of all of the same um, facilities like the other colleges, except they're all brand new <laughs> and they're really incredible and super lovely. So we have a dance studio, but we also have a basketball court. Um, so we have a cool half court, which is super fun to go hang out in um, and play around. We have music practice rooms. We have our very own recording studio. And also, I also, I just really love that we have seminar rooms in our basement, um, which are basically classrooms that we get to kind of take over at night and use for study spaces. Um, and as you can see in the top right, that is our beautiful dining hall where we had a really grand junior dinner last year. Um, and the bottom is the gym, which admittedly I do not go to, but that was the one time I did go <laughs> with my friends. Um, this year due to COVID, as you can imagine, I'm currently on campus in residence, so I get to still enjoy all of these facilities. Um, and right now we just have a huge tent in our courtyard um, to really encourage people to sit outside and stay safe and socially distance. And in the left is one of my favorite pictures that I've taken of my dorm because yes, that was the view from my dorm last year, looking out onto the street and seeing all the beautiful fall colors. So we definitely have the best dorms in all of your college. And on the last slide, next slide. So here I basically just wanted to highlight something a little bit different um, than the rest of my colleagues. Um, so again, we have a lot of traditions, we have a lot of fun things, but for me personally, the most defining part of my experience in my college has been my friend group. Um, I am very, very close to all of my friends in Franklin. Um, we got really close knit first year since we got to live in the college and really hang out with each other a lot. And my favorite tradition is really just hanging out in my suite, throwing parties. We are known for our annual Christmas party, which you'll see first year is the upper right, then right below that was our junior year, and in the middle was our sophomore year, so that's always really fun. And I, yeah, I just love to really welcome people into our space, and that has been such a huge part of my residential college experience. So yes, there are all these fun, big college traditions, and even, college, and even like Yale college-wide traditions. Um, but for me and a lot of other people, the super special moments are just within your first year counselor group or your suite mates um, or all the other friends that you kind of pick up along the way in your college. And with that, I think we're going to go on to the main Q&A now. Yeah, we are. Thank you, Morgan. Um, so everyone can come back on screen right now. Thank you all so much for those intros. They kind of made me emotional. I also learned a lot more than I knew before, like science dinners, gratitude corners, mini museums of ice cream. Like I can't even, but I do have to take a quick moment to shout out all of the other residential colleges that weren't mentioned tonight. We do have 14 of them. We only could get to a few for timing's sake. Um, I'll also put in a very quick plug for Jonathan Edwards College, JE, because that's the college that I was in while I was at Yale. But you know, other than that, um, as I move into these kind of moderated questions that I just, that I talked about during the intro, this is a really great time to start using that live Q&A feature if you haven't already. I've noticed some of you snuck in there a little early, but right now is the time to be using that. I'm gonna ask one question of our panelists and then we're gonna move into that live Q&A. So that first question that I have, I think is a pretty fun one because I was pretty close with my head of college and Dean while I was in JE. But my question is, how have you connected with your head or your dean while you've been in your residential college and anyone can jump in we'll kind of popcorn it and then move into those live Q&A questions I can start by saying that I've had really amazing just casual interactions with my head of college as well as my dean um, in Berkeley College we've been taken out to dinners with our head of college and dean to a few restaurants in New Haven and it's usually in groups of around 
eight to 10 students with the head of college and dean. And it's really nice to get to know your dean and head of college in this way. The conversations don't have to be academic in any way. They can really be about what all the students are doing at that time. And in that sense, I really loved getting to know what my head of college does on the weekends, what movies he watches, um, how they just enjoy life in the residential college. And it's really fun. Yeah, I would, I would definitely say that my head of college, wow, like, what, what can you say? Um, I, I definitely want to come from the point of just being remote, like enrolled remotely. Um, so before, you know, kind of the pandemic hit and everything, like I was actually, like, although I was on old campus, I still got to like visit styles. I went to the dining hall every day, like I always saw. Um, my head and dean of college and then when everything happened and now that I'm enrolled remotely this semester like that same love that same communication is still there um, and like me and my head of college we send each other poems she's a big like poetry fan and so am I so like we have like poets and like poems that we send each other um, since I'm in Philly right now and there are a lot of girls she like she tells me, like, she calls me sometimes and she'll be like, yeah, like, you know, never, like, never, um, like, like, don't worry to send me, like, a picture of a mural that you see that's beautiful on your, like, walk or something like that. Um, like, she is truly, I, I call her my second mom. She feels like family. Um, and I am just extremely appreciative, again, of, like, the family that I have in Styles and, like, the wonderful woman Head Camacho is. Yeah, adding on to that, I really just appreciate like how much my dean and head of college like just care about like my daily life. Um, and so like I'm also remote this semester and before the semester started, I got a welcome back note from my head of college and dean. And so they like sent letters out to like all the like remote students and that was just super sweet. Um, and I remember my first year, um, I had like a class during like normal lunch times and I like just brought it up very casually to my head of college um and head de la cruz was like you should definitely check out like these other options like making sure that I was able to get a meal in um and making sure that I was practicing like self-care and I think that was just super sweet um and I actually am just gonna hop on a zoom call with my head of college tomorrow so I'm super excited for that as well I love all of these responses I will say like I am an alum kind of I don't even know how many years out, don't make me do the math, but a few years out and I still interact with my head of college and my dean. Like those are just people that are constantly there for me, have been there for me and will continue to be there for me. And I feel like you're all kind of giving that sense in the responses that you've given. So I'm gonna go ahead and move into that live Q&A now because there have been some really great questions already. We've got a lot of them and I wanna get into as many as them as we possibly can. So the first question is, I've heard that there are days when residential colleges eat as a group together in their own dining halls sort of like a big family dinner for the res call does that still happen and if so what is it like so i think that's a pretty like clear answer for all of you so if one person wants to take that one uh go for it sure i can take this one so usually in residential colleges sundays are designated as family dinner days and so usually what this that means is you will eat within your residential colleges. If you are a first year student, you will be eating with your first year counselor group or FROCO group, as we like to call them. So when you get your IDAL, you'll usually have your residential college sticker on it. And so that's basically how you, you know, that's how you sort of sign into your family dinner. You can access family dinners in other colleges, but usually Sundays are designated to um, the residential college dinner. There are other dinners as well that we do spend as community. So for example, at the end of the year, we have our holiday dinners and we have these in our residential colleges. So the colleges get completely decked out in just Christmas decorations and just giant food, like big loaves of bread, cheese, shrimp, ice sculptures, and we just completely dress up for that. And we have our holiday dinners within our colleges. So we do have these smaller um, sort of community dinners, but again, you can also, if you're not in a particular residential college and you'd like to attend a community dinner at another college, you are always welcome to. Thanks fellas. I think that was a pretty great and comprehensive answer for that question. So I'm just gonna go ahead and move on to the next one, which is what are the tutoring opportunities that are available inside the residential colleges? anyone can popcorn this as well. 
I can go ahead and start this one off. So most colleges, I think, will have at least a few tutors across different subjects. So I remember in Franklin, my first year, um, there was somebody who was tutoring in econ, another one who's tutoring in math and science. Um, and also all residential colleges have a writing partner as well. So I guess just a little anecdote, I took econ my first year and I was quite frankly awful <laughs> at econ. So I do remember going on Sunday nights with a few of my friends to go meet with the econ tuner who just sat in one of the seminar rooms in our basement for just hours helping us out. And it was really incredible, but really helpful just that I didn't have to go anywhere. Um, and that I got to meet with somebody consistently to really help me through the semester. So I think most colleges have something similar to that. And I think it's often across different subject areas. And another cool thing about writing tutors is that say the writing tutor in your college is booked for the night, you can also um, just book an appointment with any of the other tutors as well. And I think that goes across every different subject. So somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but it just let, it lets all the tutors who are available in the colleges be super accessible to everybody, which again is super important, especially as a first year who's bad at econ or other subjects. <laughs> I just love to jump in here and say I was also bad at econ and really appreciated tutors, Morgan. So I am there with you. Zephora, Michael, I see you. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, so there is another question here, which is, and I'm going to expand this one a little bit, but it says, are the traditions at each college limited to the members of said college or can others attend? And I think in answering this question, I would love if people actually also described whatever tradition that they were describing if other members attended or if not, um, because I love the traditions that happen at Yale and I think the residential college traditions vary and are all very interesting to listen to. So anyone can popcorn that one as well. <laughs> I'll go ahead and start by saying that at least in Berkeley College, there are a few traditions that are limited mostly to members of Berkeley College. Thinking about something like Thunder Brunch, it is almost exclusive, but at the same time, there are ways to bring in people from other colleges. If you come with a guest from another college, it's possible to bring them in as your guest. Um, and also, the staff is usually really understanding of everything and the head of college is going to be there. Um, and so everyone's really welcoming for the most part. Um, and also there's events like formals and dances. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's the same across all of the colleges, but at least with Berkeley College, anyone is welcome to come if you bring them as your invite. And so the night of, you just make sure that they know they have their ticket and everything will be fine. Margo, I'm gonna put you on the spot for a second there. Can you tell me what your favorite tradition in Berkeley is? Yeah, my favorite tradition in Berkeley is definitely Thunder Brunch. I, the, the way that it's set up is it starts at, I believe, 10 a.m. Um, but everybody starts lining up around like 930 because everybody knows that the dining hall will be packed. And as soon as you get in, you stay there until Thunder Brunch is over because you eat plate after plate after plate. And then nobody ever eats. When you go to Thunder Brunch, you don't eat for the rest of the day because you're so full that you can't add anything else to your stomach. Um, and it's really just a great way to spend many hours eating with your friends. As you should, as you should. Phyllis, I saw that you were gonna answer that question too. Go for it. I, I completely agree with Marco. It, it depends on the tradition. Like there's some traditions where we have to have other colleges involved. So in Silliman College's case, we do have a rival college and it's Timothy Dwight isn't represented today. Typical Timothy Dwight. Um, but usually after the first snowfall um, on the Silliman courtyard, since it is a bigger courtyard than Timothy Dwight's, we have our annual Silliman Timothy Dwight snowball fight. So that has to happen every single year. Um, I'm pretty sure Silliman has won it the past three times. Um, I haven't really gone outside for that because I soon learned that snowball fights are actually pretty dangerous and scary and it was my first time seeing snow and it's not as soft and flaky as I thought it would be. So that's a really great tradition to watch from my dorm room. Um, another fun one is Halloween. So I mentioned earlier Silliman is really big on Halloween. So we put on a haunted house that is open to the entire Yale community. So we have faculty members coming through our haunted house. Um, I remember 
President Salovey walking through my station. I just jumped out as a spider and gave him a fright. And I was like, oh my gosh, it was President Salovey. I'm so sorry. Um, I almost apologized and got out of character. But that's an example of an event we do for the broader Yale community. Um, but we also have Silly Fest, with Fest, which is supposed to be um, strictly for Silliman students. But like Marco said, you can usually just sneak in a few friends here and there. Um, our colleges are very warm and welcoming to um, the entire Yale community. But I would probably say my favorite um, cinnamon tradition would be would be Halloween, Halloween week, as we like to call it. I just have to say, if anyone hasn't noticed, I have pumpkins in the background here. Spooky season is my favorite season, and I am shocked that I have not gone to the Silliman Haunted House yet because I will be there the next time that you are holding it. I know it's probably not going to be this year because of the pandemic, but I'm very excited. Um, so we have another question that's more of a logistical question, so anyone can take this one. I know you all know the answer to this, but it's, are you assigned to a college based on what you major in or, you know, if that's not the case, how are you assigned to a college? So if anyone wants to take that one, go for it. Yeah, I can, I can definitely take this one. Um, being a Harry Potter fan, I, I definitely call it the sorting hat because you aren't um, assigned to a college based on like your major or anything like that. You'll find that um, Yale tries to kind of like make the population of all residential college kind of represent all residential colleges representative of the entire um, student body. So like you'll find people with like an interest in STEM, you'll find people with interest in like the humanities, like it's, it's very randomized. Um, I remember there being like a survey asking me like, you know, what kind of things I like to do, what are my interests, but that definitely has no kind of um, like say in the matter. It's just like, like you getting into a residential college, just like you getting into like Slytherin or Hufflepuff. Um, and like, once you get in, it's like, oh my gosh, like I'm at Ezra Styles and I'm gonna rep Ezra Styles and, or you're gonna be like Phyllis and have all of the merchandise. Like it, it's really like very, very much a pride thing. Like a, this is my kind of um, home within a home because you have the Yale community, but then you have your residential college community. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just a really fun way to kind of just get randomly assigned to a bunch of people that you will probably and most likely end up calling your family and closest friends at Yale. I totally agree with that answer. Um, and in a similar vein, we had another question, which was, do you think that the residential colleges facilitate the high school to college transition by creating those smaller communities? Uh, and I think support that you kind of just kind of like touched upon it right there. You were like, you're thrown into these colleges with other people that you've never met before, and you, they end up being your closest friends. But if anyone wants to touch upon that question specifically, please jump in, because I know that there are a lot of experiences. I am still best friends with someone that I was paired with in in my suite in my very first year. So I know that it's a real thing. <laughs> yeah, I think it's super easy to find community really quickly uh, because of the residential colleges. I remember like literally in my first day on move-in day, I met my head of college, I met my residential college dean, I met my first year counselor, I met the 13 other people in my first year counselor group, I met my Asian American Cultural Center peer liaison for Branford. So like within like what my first like eight hours on campus, I already had like a group of over 20 people that like I got to meet and like were friends with and were able to uh, eat in the dining halls with and hang out with. Um, and I think, you know, what's really special about the residential colleges is that, you know, the 100 or so first years in your residential college are probably going to be the first like 100 or so people you meet at Yale. Um, and it's really nice to have like a strong community that will like support you no matter what, like from your first day. Um, and I think that's what really makes the residential college system special at Yale. Thanks, Michael. Um, so we have another question. We've actually been getting this question kind of frequently in different ways, which is, you know, obviously there are organizations and there's unique clubs that are associated with different residential colleges, but are they kind of specific to the college and is there anything preventing someone who's in another residential college from being a part of them? And actually I'm going to expand this question out to not only the organizations and the clubs that are a part of colleges, but also to just the facilities in general. Are those also open to other people from other residential colleges? Yeah, I'll start by talking about the Berkeley College Orchestra. I know is maybe the biggest group in Berkeley and it is open to people outside of Berkeley. Um, and it's sort of the same with all of our facilities, the wood shop, the basketball court, 
um, and the Roost, so the Wellness Center, are accessible to anybody outside of Berkeley College. Um, and likewise with the dining hall. Anybody can go to the dining hall. And we usually find that everybody goes to the Berkeley dining hall, which is what makes it just an amazing space. I love the Berkeley dining hall. Margo, I thought that was a big claim to make, but I'll let you have it just for this, just because Berkeley is centralized. Does anyone else want to jump in with anything for that answer? It's okay if not, but good. All right, we're good for that one. Okay, so we have another question, which is just about, you know, speaking to different religious spaces that might be in the re residential colleges. Are there any, and do students utilize them in different ways? Does anyone wanna take that one? Yeah, I can go ahead and take that one. So there are a few different uh, uh, religious spaces in residential colleges, um, and that is usually through our chaplain's office. So if you're interested, check out the Yale chaplain's office, which kind of oversees a lot of the religious groups on campus. Um, but mostly they're centralized in a part of old campus, which I think Zippor mentioned is where a lot of the first years will live. Um, and there's a space, there's a chaplain's office space in one part of old campus. And that's where you'll find a masala, which is the Muslim prayer room, but also a Hindu, a Hindu prayer room. Um, and, and the, and in one of the basements um, of Branford College, there's also a Buddhist shrine. So those are a few of the religious spaces that are on campus open, of course, to everybody um, and for anybody to use. And there are different programs and prayer times that go on in each of the spaces. Um, and uh, there's other areas just around campus. Like I know friends who, for example, go to a masjid who, that is off campus to pray um, on Fridays or will go to churches around New Haven as well. So it's definitely not spe specific or restricted to just campus. Um, there are a lot of different spaces around New Haven as well. Perfect, thank you so much, Morgan. Um, so we have another question here, which is, I'm wondering, like obviously all of you have mentioned that you've made your like best friends uh, in your residential colleges and the people that you're really close to are in your residential colleges. So we have a question here that I think is actually a really valid one, which is, I'm wondering if most of your social activities are within the residential college or are there a lot of opportunities to mix with people who are outside of your residential college? Yeah, so I can definitely um, take this one in if anybody wants to add on. I think that Yale does a really good job of making communities within the like larger um, like undergraduate population and you can like be involved um, as much or as little as you want. So like, yes, my bestest friend, like who I probably wouldn't have been as close to if we weren't like both sorted in styles. Um, like she's in the in the college for me and I love her and I'm always with her. Um, same with like the community in styles. I think that it's the best and I think that I love like all of my stylesians and, and I call them family. Um, but I also do like a lot of different things outside of the college, right? And it's just really cool because sometimes, you know, um, like Yale students, it's different from high school. Uh, in high school, you have like home, right? And then you have school and then you might go to a different place for your extracurriculars. Whereas on campus, like that's all kind of in the same bubble. And so I think what you know, the residential college does is kind of give you that home, like that compartmentalization um, so that like, yeah, like Jada is not in Rhythmic Blue, uh, which is a hip hop dance team. Like she's not in that with me, but it's cool because I can invite her to come and see my performances, right? I can invite my head of college, my dean to come and see my performances, right? And so I think that like, things are mixing and you can be involved with the residential college as much or as little as you want. And it's really cool to kind of still have that like compartmentalization and like having things um, different, although everything is in like the Yale bubble as we call it, um, which I really appreciate. Yeah, adding on to that, I think um, like the residential colleges offer a really intimate community from day one, but also it does not restrict you in any way, right? Like. Some of my best friends are in like Saybrook, Silliman, Berkeley, Stiles, Morris, like, you know, and all, all across these different residential colleges. And so like, I would find myself, you know, having brunch in Berkeley on one weekend or like studying in Silliman's Acorn Cafe on another like weekday. Um, and so, you know, because of that, like I'm able to experience different aspects of other residential colleges, not limited to Brantford because I have friends and others. Um, but at the same time, like, I can always just go to my own residential college and I'll 
be familiar with all the facilities, know everyone who's sitting in the courtyard. Um, and so, you know, there's like a nice balance. Like you have your own residential college that, you know, you're super, you feel super, you know, proud of, um, but you can also go and explore the other res colleges as well. Um, but on that note, I will just one more time, just for emphasis, Branford is objectively the best. Like everyone on this call knows we have the best courtyard. Like, Sorry, Michael, Michael, I, I don't know. I don't know. I think you need to like cut it off there. JE obviously is the best college. Come on. Um, but I have a bit of a fun question here, which is who has been the most memorable guest speaker that might have come to your residential college? Or I'm going to expand this out because I know a lot of cool speakers come to the colleges and they come to all different colleges. So if you know one that was at a different college, you can also mention that. But who have been some memorable people? So I, um, I definitely absolutely enjoyed Alison Williams when she came to speak in Silliman College. Um, and, and Jill brought up an important point that you can attend the college teas at other colleges. So although I couldn't find my way into Mindy Kaling's tea in Timothy Dwight, I walked out of Silliman and she was standing right in front of me and I was just like, ah, uh, <laughs> took a selfie from afar. Um, but Definitely Alison Williams was really cool. Um, we also had um, the head of merchandising of Marvel come and speak to us. Um, and we got like free Marvel stuff, like merchandise. I'm all about merchandise. I don't know if you guys can tell. <laughs> I'll stop on the merchandise. But it was really cool um, to hear all these secrets about like Black Panther and all these top secret secrets about upcoming Marvel movies. Um, and when I went to a Sabra college, the writer of Moon Knight was actually speaking there. Um, I also got to meet, um, being a Zimbabwean, I was also able to meet the former um, American ambassador to Zimbabwe, um, who is now a professor at Yale. And I got to meet him through a uh, college tea ambassador, Thomas. And so those have been some really exciting speakers who have sort of ranged from, you know, my interest in kind of like film all the way to, you know, hitting it home with the ambassador. <laughs> um, so it's, it's been really great to sort of explore all those options in, in college tees and seeing those famous people just walk through your residential college and also talk about their college experience, which sounds very similar to, to yours. So it was very cool to experience that. So like no cool people have ever come to, you've never seen any cool people, obviously. <laughs> Does anyone else want to jump in with anyone that they've seen or that they've heard have come to other residential colleges? It's okay if not. We have many questions. All right, I'm gonna move on. Okay, so we have another question and I really like this question because I love first year move-in day. But the question is kind of how does each residential college welcome and incorporate incoming students into their community? And obviously I'm gonna expand that to like, what is first year move-in day like? What does that look like? What did it look like for you? Uh, so anyone can kind of answer that one. First day move-in for me was when I first realized that I had no doubts about being at Yale. Um, I remember, so I was dri I drive, I sometimes drive to Yale from Chicago, um, and that's what I did my first year. And I'm a first generation college student. I didn't know what I was getting into. I was like ready to move all my stuff by myself up to the third floor. Um, and I remember showing up and somebody pulled up to my window um, it was my Froco, my first year counselor, but I didn't know who it was. And they were like, are you Marco? And I was like, yeah. And then they opened the doors to my dad's truck and they took out all of the things. And I was sort of like, where, where are they going? Um, and so I only had my pillow left and I went upstairs with my pillow and all of my things were in my room. Um, and it was so amazing. I felt like they were like watching out for me from the beginning. And I remember my parents leaving and I cried a little bit and then maybe half an hour later, I was like, no, I love it here. And I kept seeing everybody moving in and everybody helping. And then you start helping other people. And it's just the best sense of community ever. Does anyone want to talk about their move-in day? Because I think that pretty much captured it for me or my experience. So if it captured it for you, we're good. We're going to move on to the next question. Um, so here's another question, which is, these are all great traditions, obviously, but how are they being maintained or adapted during COVID-19? Some of you are remote, some of you are on campus. Like, what is happening now? What are the residential colleges doing now, now that not everyone's here and things are a little kind of up in the air? 
So being on campus, I can kind of start this out because I've seen the balance of like trying to cater to the people who are in person, but also who are remote. So a lot of the traditions like our dances and formals obviously had to be canceled. But I think it's kind of been clear when everybody's talking that the fun things are usually just the random week to week events. So for example, um, our college has been sending out a weekly newsletter of events. Um, and it always has like a balance of just like, here are some of the things you can do in person, like take some pottery to go and like do it in your suite or paint some like glasses in your suite or something like that, or a movie night in person. Um, and so like one thing that we did a few weeks ago was we had a massive projector in our courtyard with a movie night. Um, but I think it was also streamed on Zoom for people who weren't, who aren't here. Um, and there was a Q and A after the movie that was like primarily done through Zoom so that all the Franklinites who are not here in New Haven could also participate. So there's been a, a bunch of things like that. And also like college teas for us at least are now all online, um, which is super cool. So that means we all get to kind of attend together even though we're not in person. Um, and I think it's pretty much the same across all the residential colleges. Um, I, would, I would just add to that. So um, I'm, I'm enrolled, but I'm off campus. And so as you noticed in my slides, I think Cinnamon is all about food. Um, so a lot of our study breaks have some sort of food component to it. And so we'll just get an email saying, hi, come and pick up your midnight snack. Sign up for a slot to pick up your s'mores because we're going to be roasting things like over Zoom or, um, you know, so we still sort of similar to what Morgan was talking about. They sort of tell us to come and pick something up and then we'll do it in our, in our own time. Um, but another big thing in Silliman is fitness classes and wellness. So I um, had a picture there of our yoga study break. So those are still happening. Fitness classes are over Zoom. But what they did was they sanitized all the equipment that's usually in the gym and they allowed us to come in um, different slots to pick up some gym equipment so that we could sort of follow along with the exercises. Um, if you are still enrolled in New Haven because our courtyard um, has enough space, uh, we still have outdoor movies happening because um, we don't have access to Silly Flicks, the movie theater. So they have um, a blow up screen on the courtyard and they put acorns on the grass our crest has acorns, our coffee shop's called the acorn, acorns are our thing. Um, but essentially they pasted um, they painted acorns onto the courtyard to sh show us how far away we can be from each other. So it's like socially distanced acorns, it's so cute. Um, but I'm able to go to Silliman to get my COVID tests and I still will speak to my head of college six feet away. So essentially they've really done their best to sort of transform, to, to maintain the social aspects um, of, of the residential colleges. Perfect. Thank you, Phyllis. So, you know, obviously we're coming on time here. We have three to four, maybe five if we're going over time minutes left. And so I do want to ask one more question of all of you, and I would love for each of you to take this. And you can kind of answer one or two, or I guess this is kind of a third question, depending on what you want to answer. And the questions are, you know, do you have any words of advice for high school juniors and seniors who are out there who might be embarking on this college admissions process? Or can you tell us why you chose Yale and did the residential colleges and their traditions play any factor in that decision? So we'll take it one by one, whoever wants to start can start, um, but I would love for all of you to kind of take either of those questions uh, and answer it for the audience. Yeah, I could start first. Um, residential colleges were a huge part of why I picked Yale. So I'll instead answer the other question um, of like what piece of advice. I think it's really easy during college application process to want to like rush and like start writing essays immediately. I think it's really important to like take a step back and to really think about like what matters to me, what has been influential in my life so far, and what do I want to share with the admissions office. Um, and you know, it's important to remember that the admissions officers reading your application are human too. They just want to know about you um, and they just want to get you to know you a bit better. So take a step back, mind map, jot down notes, brainstorm, do all of that. Um, and eventually, you know, your best ideas will come through. Anybody jump in? Sure, I, I can go next. Um, I'll sort of combine the two and, and just start off by saying, you know, yes, you are coming to college to pursue your academics, but remember that you will eventually leave the classroom and your, the community of your college really, really matters. And so take that into consideration and in picking out your colleges. We've all described the amazing times and the amazing community we have within our residential colleges in being an international student coming from 
far, far away, you know, not even knowing what winter's like, not having seen snow for the first time, but, you know, having someone like my head of college walk me into office, order a winter coat for me and like apparently you need like snow boots and like hand warmers and things I didn't even know I needed and having all of that taken care of was really really important in my college decision making because you know you have the academics to really focus that you need to focus on and so it was great to choose a university that I knew would take care of me and that I knew you know I wouldn't have to stress about all the other things that come with college in addition to being an international student and experiencing my first winter etc. So really look at your college application process holistically. The reason that I chose Yale was just because when I visited I saw that literally everybody was dedicated to something outside of academics. Obviously everyone cares about school but everyone was also really involved in other communities that they really cared about. They weren't just doing them just because they wanted to do something random. They really cared about the people that they were working with or the clubs that they were involved in or just the fun things that they were doing, like going hiking to East Rock. It felt like everybody was really dedicated to something and I really wanted to be a part of it. I can answer next and coming up being a senior, I'm gonna go back to why I chose you because it's a little bit nostalgic for me. Um, but I definitely chose it because once I got in, I didn't even realize that was going to be a possibility. So that was crazy. And then I just felt really cared and known for by my admissions officer, actually, who like wrote me a letter and like was responding to my emails. And I was like, this is insane. This is like such a big school. Why are you answering me? Um, and he did an incredible job at just getting me to come visit Yale, even though I didn't think I'd be able to afford it or anything like that. And I just remember stepping onto campus and feeling like, wow, I can make this my home. Everybody is so friendly. And I just felt like I was a part of a community that even though I didn't really know anybody, um, but I also just like vividly remember staying with my host in her room in, St uh, well, not Styles in Farnham um, on an old campus. And there were people coming in and out. And I was like, what is this? It feels so fun. It feels like a family. People were just hanging out with me as if I was also a Yale student. And I just left campus realizing that this was a community that I definitely needed to be a part of. And yeah, best decision I've ever made. Yes, I, I'm going to echo everybody and try to hit both questions. Um, everybody gave really good advice and why they love Yale. My advice to high school juniors and seniors would be to put thing like put everything into your application, but don't let the application overrun you. Um, oftentimes I've heard from students that they've missed their homecoming, they've missed their proms, um, they've missed ditch day, <laughs> um, the only day that you can ditch. Um, doing their application process and like I I would encourage you all not to do that I would encourage you all to like have fun with your friends you know you know be with the people from home that you call you know your family because that same sense of community that same like love so much love that you can have for people is what you're going to want in a college and I think that this residential college panel is to show you that those same high school, you know, like proms and dances and, and dinners that you had with, you know, high school friends that we don't want you to miss out on. You're going to have so much more of those in college. And if you come to Yale and if you apply to Yale, please, like, just look into all of the resources that we have because, you know, the sense of community here is like no other. Um, and, I, and I really do appreciate everybody. Um, my Silesians, of course, but just Yale East period. Um, so, yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. Sorry. I got a little emotional. I didn't even know I was supposed to unmute myself. <laughs> um, thank you all so, so much for those answers. And thank everyone who's kind of with us tonight for being here with us. Obviously, we did not get to all of the questions. You all had so many good questions. There was no way we could get to all of them in an hour. We tried our best, but please stay in touch with us. Uh, we have a question portal on our website, admissions.yale.edu slash questions. We are going to be posting this video along with all the recordings from all the other Mo sessions on admissions.yale.edu slash Mo, which Maura put in the chat, and so many other resources that we have. We're doing information sessions Mondays through Friday at different times. We're doing student forums at noon uh, Eastern Standard Time every single day, Monday through Friday again. And so please check us out, get more information, do your research. We want to hear from you. But thank you again for being here with us tonight, and hopefully you enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you all 
all to our student panelists. You guys made me emotional. I wish I could go back to college. I guess I'm still here in some ways, but it really was a really great night. Um, so I hope everyone has a great week and goodbye. Enjoy the rest of your night or whatever time it is, wherever you are. Bye everyone.